Welcome to Point Blank, brought to you by Fitz Roofing. I'm Brandon Strange of Sports Map Houston. He's Joel Blank of ESPN 97.5, 92.5. Remember, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe on the channel. Joel, multiple reports are saying that Deshaun Watson now wants to go to either the Niners or the Broncos. John McClain has also done a full 180 on his original stance, said now he believes the Texans will trade Deshaun. So I want to break down these two trade options with you. And uh, neither of these teams has a top eight draft pick. So the assumption is that a trade here would involve picks with players. So let's let's go through it. First is Denver. Um, let's say it's multiple draft picks and perhaps one of their young receivers, either Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy. And just for reference, for those who are going to argue and say that price tag's too high, the Bears have already reportedly offered Seattle three firsts, a third, and two starters for Russell Wilson. So just with that context in mind, we'll pick this back up and say, Joel, what do you think about the possibility of picks plus a young receiver like Sutton or Judy? I think it's good, Brandon. I think it's a good starting point. I think that's where you at least have the conversation continue because if you're not willing to come through to start the discussion in the opening stages with at least three first round picks, a player or two, as you mentioned in the Wilson deal, and some other future considerations, then it's not worth talking to anybody about because he's under contract with you. But if that's going to be on the table, then it behooves Nick Casario and or Jack Easterby and whoever else to get involved in a discussion with that team because you have so many holes and so many places of need. We know that you need edge rushers and JJ's now gone as well and, and they're conti continuing to cut cap space by getting rid of players. We know that since D-Hop and it looks like Will Fuller are both going to be gone, you need receivers. Yes, you could help use some help in the running game long term, but more so than anything else, you just need as many assets and draft picks as you can possibly get. If you can get that and young players, you take them and then you move forward. And so that's why I think a trade like this is important. And, and let's be honest, Brandon, with no matter who is making the trade and what you're looking for in return, the key is going to be no matter what picks you get back after this season, your pick's probably going to be more, more valuable. You are going to have a whole lot of suck next year. And it's probably in your best interest, much like the Rockets right now, to do that as good as you possibly can because you may have the number one pick in the whole draft next season and then you don't have to worry about what other picks are that you got as long as they're in the top half of the top rounds of the of the draft that's fine you're going to get good young talent that's going to be on your roster but if you want that impact player your picks are probably going to be good enough to get you a lot of those and the Niners also have some impact players that uh, may be able to come over in a trade. And before we get to that and highlight that, why don't you give us a word from Fitz Roofing? Yeah, look, guys, we love Fitz Roofing. They support us. They support the people of Houston, Texas. It's not just roofing that they do. They also do home repairs. They also do fences. They do so much. And the best thing about it is they do free, no obligation inspections that cost you nothing. But they, your, their expert opinion can tell you, well, you can write this off on your insurance. That's covered. Or we can get you the best price. And this is what we can do. All it takes is a phone call. 832-521-3001. It's Fitz Roofing making a difference one home at a time. Okay, Joel, let's look at the Niners. So again, a scenario uh, for a trade here would be possibly multiple draft picks, you know, any number of combination of first rounders and second rounders, multiple picks here, and maybe either a guy like uh, pass rusher Nick Bosa or tight end George Kittle. Those are two guys who would make a, an immediate impact on this Texans team. Do you, would you like a deal like that? Or, you know, how, would you like the deal more like with Denver? So here's the thing where it's a little bit quirky, Brandon, but it's something that you have to take note of. The, the Niners were bad this year because of a lot of injuries, but they're a good football team that isn't too far removed from being in the NFC Championship game and going to the Super Bowl. So I think that when you look at the Niners, it, it, what you're saying is with Deshaun Watson, along with all the talent that they have, there's a pretty good chance that after this season's picks, those picks aren't going to be worth nearly as much and they're not going to be in the upper 15 of the draft because the Niners would be really, really good and Deshaun would take them to another level. So that's where you've got to get really good players coming back, good young players, but are going to be impact players for you because the picks won't be as high and they won't carry as much value. So that's where if you can get a Bosa and their front seven was dominant for the last couple of years with lots of good talent. I think that if you could get a Bosa, that's a deal starter for sure. Yes, you get some draft picks sprinkled in. Yes, you can always find in the first two to three rounds players that are going to be impactful or roster players, starters, etc. But it's key that you get at least Bosa 
Bosa. I don't think they're going to be willing to give up Kittle because if you get Deshaun, you're going to need to put weapons around him. Kittle's their best weapon. It would be tougher to get him, but because they have so much talent on their defensive line, maybe it would be easier to get a guy like Bosa as the centerpiece coming back. And the Texans would say with J.J. out, Bosa coming in, a dominant young defender would really be something the team could build around. And that could be something where the discussions would continue. But again, I say as a Texans fan, keep an eye on the fact the Niners aren't going to be going south for long and there's too much talent on that team. It was just injuries. Those picks aren't going to be as high as Denver's. Therefore, I don't think it would be valued as much to get the draft picks from the Niners as it would be to get a boatload of picks from Denver. It's a good point. Joel, with the addition of Terod Taylor, does this now mean that guys like Drew Locke or Jimmy Garoppolo are off the Texans radar to trade for? Or does Taylor's deal being only having this six million dollar base? Because that he, does that mean he could still very well be a backup for this team? Oh, absolutely. I think that you've seen a, a complete one hundred and eighty in terms of how the backup quarterback is perceived in the NFL, and it started with Nick Foles. But you look at what the Saints have done the last couple of years. First with Teddy Bridgewater, and then last year with the combination of having Jameis Winston, but also having Taysom Hill, so that they can get by when Drew Brees went down. A, a backup quarterback is very important these days because if you've got an outstanding team and your number one goes down and you don't have a decent number two, your whole season could be ruined no matter how good the rest of the team is around you. So I think that the Terod Taylor deal makes a lot of sense for the Texans because one, it's a short-term fix if something's done with Deshaun. And two, if nothing's done with Deshaun, I've said this over and over over the last couple of years. Why do you have A.J. McCarron or Tom Savage or, or the guys that you've put in behind Deshaun when they are totally different athletes, different quarterbacks, and have a different skill set? set than your best football player. And and so you have to change your system. We saw this firsthand when Deshaun went down. You had to dummy down the offense and completely change everything for a pocket passer that couldn't run, as opposed to having your number two have the same skill set as your number one quarterback, and therefore you could continue to run and hopefully not miss a beat the same offense that you were running if it was Deshaun or whoever your number one was. So I think for a lot of reasons, the Taylor signing makes a whole lot of sense, and it's a good fit for the Texans. I also don't think that it takes you away from consideration of a bridge quarterback, especially if you get a bridge quarterback that still has upside. In the case of Locke, we don't know for sure, but we know he's got he's young. He still has a lot of talent. He has a lot to learn, and he could get better. In the case of Jimmy Garoppolo, he's got a lot to prove. He's got all the money in the bank, but he's looking for an opportunity where he can really prove himself that he never got with New England or with the Niners, or he just couldn't do it when he was with the Niners. And maybe this is the case uh, of, of a situation for three years or so. He can get you to where you need to go until your next quarterback or your franchise quarterback is ready to play. So I wouldn't close the door on either one of those guys or Terod Taylor, but I would say this. Terod Taylor has more value because of the fact that in the very short term for this next season, whether as a starter or a backup, he's going to be what the Texans need. In the next two to three years, a Garoppolo or a Locke could be the guy that bridged the gap until whether it's next year's draft or the year after that, you find that quarterback that ends up being your true franchise quarterback. And maybe it is one of those guys that end up proving themselves. In the meantime, they could also end up being a backup at some point at the right price, but you take them because they still get you where you need to go in the short term. 